Hey friends, welcome back to the Happy Homestead. I'm Amanda, and today I'm going to show you two ways that you can use and preserve your garlic scapes. Maybe you're wondering what a garlic scape is. Let me show you. <laughs> I've got quite the bundle here. So I'll take one. A garlic scape is when you're growing hard neck garlic. Um, you know, the garlic's growing and it's got all these leaves coming up, and then in the middle, through the leaves, usually between 30 to 60 days before you would normally harvest your garlic, it's going to send up this shoot and it almost always kind of curls like this. And you want to clip these, just cut them as close as you can to where they're growing from the stem. And you'll see like a little flower head, that's the flower head. Uh, some of them, I mean, the flowers are all not quite yet developed, but you can easily see that flower head. You cut these off because if you don't, your garlic is then gonna put all of its energy into flowering, which really doesn't help for the delicious, tasty garlic that is big and bulbous. And so by cutting off the garlic scape, you allow the garlic plant to put all its energy down into the bulb, grow these gorgeous big cloves, depending upon the type of garlic you're growing, and then you get to harvest it. I'll harvest mine. We're in um, towards the end of May right now. I'm in zone 7B. I planted my garlic in October. I will most likely harvest my garlic at the end of June, so probably another 30 days or so. But these garlic scapes have been coming up for probably the last three weeks. That's why I say, you know, between 30 and 60 days before harvest is when you're going to want to cut those scapes off. Now, you're going to see them come up and you don't want to cut them when they're teeny tiny. Let them get a little bit bigger so you have more to work with. And so a garlic scape is something you will not find in grocery stores. You very well may find them at the farmer's market this time of year in the spring. Um, and certainly if you know anyone growing garlic, you can always ask if you can try a scape or two. They are delicious. So usually when I cut them, and I just cut these this morning at like six o'clock this morning. By the way, I don't know if anyone else says this, I wake up so early, usually between 5.30 and 5.45 lately, everyone's still asleep and I immediately go outside. I'm still in my pajamas, y'all, but I go outside into the garden and the birds are chirping. It is so quiet, it is so peaceful, and it is just an amazing way to start the day off. And so this morning I did that and cut my garlic scapes. Now, as soon as I cut them, mm, I always am like always in the garden, like <laughs> stiffing my garlic because it smells like garlic. It's a little bit different smell. It's not entirely like a clove of garlic, but it is delicious. And so what we're gonna do is two things today to preserve your scapes. Now, if you didn't have many and you just had a few, you can easily just put them in the fridge and then you're gonna wanna make sure you cut off any of uh, yellowing or brown ends or you know some that maybe just don't look too great. Um, the bottoms, depending upon when you cut them to when you're gonna use them, could get kind of tough and a little bit chewy and woody so you might want to just kind of like an asparagus wood right so you might want to just kind of trim off some of those harder ends and then you can just cut them up dice them up and saute them and cook with them like you would a clove of garlic so they're perfect for that too however if you have more than you just want to saute up for a meal preserving them is the way to go I'm gonna show you two ways that I prefer to do it. Uh, one of the ways is garlic scape butter. Garlic scape butter. I mean, how can you go wrong? <laughs> how is it possible? So I took out one pound of butter. This is two half pound blocks. Um, this is the Rumiano organic unsalted butter that we get from Azure and these were in our freezer so these are still quite hard so these are just going to sit on the counter until we're ready to make our butter in the meantime we're going to do the second way which is fermented garlic scapes so i'll click or you can click above i'll put the link above i have an entire fermenting playlist 
And so what we're doing is almost similar to the fermented carrots. I think that might be up there. Um, I am going to use two pint jars. Honestly, it might only fill one pint jar because I wanna save some for my garlic scape butter. But in my pint jar, I am going to put in um, our brine, which is filtered water and red mandrill salt. I've got some crushed cayenne pepper, some dried minced onion, peppercorns, and some dried dill. And then I've got my airlock tops, which you probably have seen me use. So that is why I'm using this jar because I only have wide mouth fermenting lids. But let me stop right there. You can use a small half pint jar if you'd like, which is the regular narrow standard mouth, and then just put a canning ring on it with a piece of fabric on top. As long as all of our solids are below the brine, and if you need to weigh it down with something, sometimes I actually literally go into the garden and get a really perfect rock, come in, wash it wonderfully, <laughs> I use a rock as my weight. Um, you can do that too. But as long as everything's below the brine level, it do you don't really have to use this type jar. So I have two here, but I might only be actually ending up with one. So we're gonna start kind of chopping up our scapes, cleaning them up and throwing them in the jar. So I'll actually start with one jar and I'm just gonna put in a pinch of the onion, a pinch of the pepper, the cayenne pepper. Just a couple of peppercorns. Now by doing this, all of these things, right, they get to stay at the bottom. Um, and hopefully by packing my garlic scapes in, they won't float to the top too much. And just do two pinches of dried dill. Because if I put all my garlic scapes in and then put my spices on top, it's very possible that all of these things are just going to stay at the top above the brine level right or kind of float on top and then i have risk for mold and other things that could happen so i'm just going to start taking my scapes and cleaning up some of the ends now i am going to be cutting off the flour on most of them the reason is because the flour is truly the most delicate part. Um, I'll probably save some and use that for fresh sauteing over the next couple of days. But if you decide to ferment your flours, you may wanna do it separate. The reason because is they're so delicate, they're just gonna ferment down a lot faster than the rest of the stock and when you're using it, you're gonna have some different textures. You could have some textures you're not really fond of. So I actually cut the flour off. And you'll notice that there's a lot here too, that after the flour, right? The flour's down here and there's a lot more up here. And I could absolutely be using that as well. I'm choosing not to, just, just because I have enough to deal with right here as it is. Now this one, this one's really big and this is really woody. So I'm just gonna kind of feel and cut some of those hard ends off. All right, well, let me stop there for a minute and I'm just gonna start chopping so you can get an idea of what we're doing. It's funny, whenever I have my compost bucket out, you can always tell what we've been doing in our kitchen been looking at our compost bucket and uh, there's a lot of strawberry tops <laughs> because we have been processing a lot and I mean a lot of strawberries so I'm dicing these small and you don't have to do that you can choose whatever size you want I plan on adding these to dishes just kind of taking a scoopful of fermented garlic scapes out, adding it to salads, you even top some soups or chili. So I'm actually doing this jar pretty tiny and you can see there's a lot of room here. So I wanna make sure I just save enough of my garlic scapes for my butter. 
So if you decided uh, back last fall to grow soft neck garlic, the soft neck garlic doesn't actually put up a scape. So if you're growing garlic and you're not sure what variety you're growing, you're welcome to just go in your garden and look. And if you don't see that scape, then you are growing soft neck garlic. So think about that because this fall, when you get ready to plant your garlic again, maybe you wanna get some garlic scapes, in which case you wanna make sure you're planting the hard neck varieties. I prefer the hard neck varieties and, and hard neck garlic just means that in the middle of that big bulb, there's that stem, that really hard stem, and then all the cloves are growing around it, whereas soft neck garlic really doesn't have that, that hard stem. It's uh, very soft and pliable, and when you're pulling your cloves away, you can easily move things around and not have a hard stem in the middle. That's the only difference. Both are t delicious, both are tasty, but only the hard neck will give you the scapes. Okay, so I've got one pint full. I've got still a decent bundle left here, but I'm gonna stop at this one pint. So I'm not gonna do the second one. So I'm gonna mix up my brine and add it in. And so the ratio that I use is per quart, about two to three tablespoons of Redmond Real Salt. Since I'm doing a pint and there's two pints per quart, I'm gonna do about one and a half tablespoons per pint. So there's one, half. And again, I'm using Redmond Real Salt. I'm gonna go fill this with water. Whenever you're doing a fermentation product, it doesn't matter if it's uh, garlic scapes or carrots or anything else, you always want to use a non-chlorinated water. So I am on city water, we live in a neighborhood, I would never ever use tap water for my ferments. I always either use bottled spring water, filtered water from our refrigerator, or if you're on a well and you feel comfortable with your water, that's perfectly fine too. Any water, as long as it is not chlorinated. Now, a lot of people would say to do this step, the water salt step first. So the salt has time to dissolve while you're chopping everything up. I would say that too. I just didn't do it. Okay, now I'm gonna pour water in. Not all of this water is gonna fit, right? Just because of the whole displacement property but we'll get majority of it in. Okay, about two thirds of it. So I'm gonna get a weight and put my fermentation lid on. This is just a glass weight. It's meant to fit the wide mouth jars and obviously I put a little too much water in. And that's it. So this is going to sit on the counter. I will eventually start to see some bubbles come up and that's how I'll know the fermentation process is working. Now, because I diced these and chopped these pretty fine, the fermentation process is not going to take long. I'll probably leave this on the counter for about a week uh, and then I'll just store it in the refrigerator and scoop out as needed. When I do put it in the fridge, I'll take this lid off and just put a regular plastic lid canning lid on. Um, I wouldn't recommend using the metal unless you're sure you can kind of keep the brine level away from it. It can just cause some corrosion and cause some rust and you don't really want that in your food. But this is done for now. I'm gonna go ahead and get prepped and started on our butter, really just kind of chopping up my scapes, making sure I've got what I need and any left over, I can actually do another ferment in a smaller jar. So I'm going to chop and dice really finely about half a cup, maybe a little bit more than half a cup of scapes that we'll add to our one pound of butter. So in an effort to be just a little bit more efficient with my time, I'm going to use my garlic scapes in a little mini food processor.
Well, that was much faster. Um, I do see a couple like longer pieces and you saw me pull out some of the, the bigger stems. You just wanna make sure you either chop everything up really well, or if there are some things that didn't chop very well and they're kind of woody, take those out. Um, but overall, this looks fantastic smells even better. So I've easily got half a cup, probably a little bit more, and that's what we'll use for the butter. So I still have a small handful left. So let's do another smaller ferment. This time I'm actually gonna do, I think, a pickling spice. I've got uh, pickling spice here. So I'm gonna change the flavors up a little bit. So I don't have too much here. I'm gonna use a half pint jar. And that way I can show you too how to do this without like a fermentation lid. I'm just gonna take a little handful of my pickling spice. And again, you can do this with any seasoning flavoring you want. You could do it with none and just do the brine, plain old fermentation, um, and that's delicious too. And I already have some leftover brine here. So I'm just gonna pour that in. Okay, so I have a small rock here. I'm just gonna put on, some of that spice is already floating. I'm just gonna pull that out. And so you can do this method with any type of fermentation. You don't have to have the fancy lids. I'm just putting a piece of fabric on and that is that. And so every now and then I'll just kind of lift up and look and make sure everything looks good. But this is gonna sit on the counter too. It's time to make our butter. I took the two packages of butter out of the wrapper, kind of cut them in cubes here. They're softened. Now, if your butter is still really cold or frozen, you can put it in the microwave. I don't want you to think that you have to wait around, right? Put it in the microwave, cut it up, but start with like 30 second increments because the last thing you want to do is melt your butter. You don't want it melted. Uh, you just want it soft enough that you can kind of mix it all together. And then we're actually going to roll it into a log. I went and picked some fresh basil from the garden. I actually thought adding a little basil in would be really delicious too. So I'm just going to roughly chop this. and we're gonna add everything in. I'm just gonna really kind of mix it up. I might actually go get a fork too. Um, this will take a few minutes, but I want, if you see any woody stems, take them out. But I want everything incorporated and really mixed well together. I do have my Redmond Real Salt here. I might add a little bit of salt. I always start and always cook with unsalted butter. It's really your preference. If all you have is salted butter on hand, by all means, use it. Don't go by something new if you have anything on hand to use. I just prefer the unsalted because I like to control the level of salt in my food rather than, um, than not. Potato masher here might work well too. We're gonna roll this into logs, put it back in the refrigerator, and that'll help it harden back up again into a really pretty shape. I will keep some in the fridge to use over the next week or two, um, but a majority of it is going to go in the freezer. And so that way, whenever I need some garlic scape butter, I can just pull some out of the freezer. I like to do this in the log shape, and the reason is just because I can just really easily slice off some discs 
One of the ways that we like to use this, and the uses, by the way, are endless. Any, in any application you would use butter, you can use a pat of the garlic skate butter. But one of the ways I really like to do it, especially in summer, is with a gorgeously grilled steak. Perfectly grilled steak, right? We like ours a little more medium to medium rare. And uh, take it off the grill, put it on the plate to let it rest a little bit, and just put a disc of the garlic scape butter on. Mm, get in my belly. <laughs> Sounds so good. <laughs> so yeah, that's one way we're gonna do it. But again, in any application, you would use butter and garlic. I mean, why not use a pad of this? All right, I think it's mixed up pretty well. I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt, maybe a teaspoon, and mix it up more. And again, this is why it's important to have your butter softened, but not too soft, because you want to be able to really put it on your parchment paper and roll it up. Now, if you accidentally get it too soft, that's okay. You can still mix it all together and then put it in the fridge in your bowl for a little bit, you know, I don't know, 30, 60 minutes, whatever it takes. Just keep checking it. And then once it's at a consistency that you can work with, you pick up where you left off. I have two pieces of paper here. I don't know if that translates well onto the camera. So I'm planning on doing two logs, right? Because I had two half pound blocks. And I envision the logs being, you know, maybe half dollar size as far as circumference. So I'm going to roll it up kind of like a Tootsie Roll, but I'm first going to just use the paper to help form that log. So with something like that. Once you get everything cold, it should peel apart really much more cleanly from your parchment paper. But you wanna make sure that as you're rolling it, you're kinda of like pushing it together so you don't have any spaces or indentations. So I'm happy with that. So I'm just gonna Continue to roll. And I'm going to twist the ends, just like that. Let's do it with the rest. into the fridge these go. Like I said, I'm gonna leave them in the refrigerator until they're really nice and compacted back together, totally solidified. May even wait just till tomorrow morning. Um, so I have that ease of mind. And uh, then you can unwrap it. You can rewrap it in plastic if you'd like. You can cut it into smaller pieces of logs if you'd like. And you basically wanna then uh, freeze it for a long-term long -term storage. And so I would wrap it in plastic. Even though it's in parchment, I'm still gonna put plastic around it um, and then put it in a safe freezer bag and then you'll have it all year long. I hope this was helpful. I'm so glad to have taken you along in this journey because now my garlic scapes are processed and it only took a few hours from harvest. So win-win because harvest season is really gonna kick in fast. Thanks for joining me today. Let me know what else you would like to see and if this video was useful for you. Stay healthy, stay well. Bye-bye.